welcome to HTV National. At right now with us, Air Marshal Dr. Raju Sachdev. Hi sir, how are you? Very fine. Sir, uh, I am asking some questions for this military education and uh, its relevance to nation building. Hmm? Sir, how forces are ready to take tech developed by the young startups? See, there are thousands of startups in this country who have now come to know what the defense forces want and they are making so many equipment, so many platforms, so many small things which we were buying from the yeah. world. Now, surprisingly, the entire India is woken up in this Atmanirvar Bharat and the startup push-up by the government and the Prime Minister himself that they are actually giving us a surprise. Things which we were buying from abroad, we don't have to buy. India is doing it on its own. You'll be surprised when Madam Sita Raman was the Defence Minister, she went abroad and she found a bulletproof jacket made in India by a startup being used by forces of the other country. And we were buying it from somewhere else. So now we don't go abroad for all these things with this negative import list and the positive indigenization list. Everything has to be first found in India. So the government is making us look into the Indian industry, find out what we require and they are making it. Buy it from them. That's how the startup is going up in this country. Not only that, the defense minister under the IDEX program is actually helping the startups not only by encouraging them, not only by giving them a competition to find out what the defense is doing, they're giving them a challenge. Okay, defense wants this, can somebody produce it? If somebody comes up with an idea and they can produce that particular product, the defense is happy with it, the money is given by the Ministry of Defense to him to start the whole project. Now, these are the things, initiatives which the government and the defense forces are taking and we have our own Army, Navy, Air Force is interacting with the startups, with the MSMEs directly and actually exchanging notes and they are manufacturing things which the forces require. Uh, and next one, sir. How does the military and the civil sector converge? This is how they are converging. <laughs> this is how they are converging. The defense expo is going to happen very soon in Gujarat, in the next week itself. Go there and see how these startups will interact with the military and you'll be surprised the way the military and the civil is. You know, this, the civil sector knows what we want and we have been able to convey to them what we want and how we can buy it from them and actually there are so many products which are being made in India by these small boys and girls and they are actually helping the military fight the war. Yeah, is there any gap between the industry and these uh, startups? That's, that's what we discuss in the seminar today. There is a gap. There is a gap, minor gap, but it is identifiable and the, we can plug that gap. It is not so difficult. All three, the academicians, the, in, the universities, IITs are actually bringing out education. The industry is manufacturing that and the armed forces is using this. If these three start talking to each other more freely, more openly, you will find that there is just, there is, the gaps will not be there. Somebody has to find these gaps and plug them. All three of us are ready to join up. And one more thing, sir. Uh, what are the future outreach plans of the forces? Like I have said in my concluding this thing also, today we are not allowed to buy anything from outside. We have to buy everything made in India. If something which cannot be made in India and we require it, we have to take special permission for that. So now see the tables have turned, instead of buying it from abroad, we have to buy it from India. If it is not available in India, then permission is given by the Raksha Mantri and we go abroad and we buy it from there. But first we have to find out whether that product is available in India or not. Not only that, with the positive indigenization list which is coming out every three months, six months out of the Ministry of Defense, there you will find that these are the equipment which have to be purchased only from the Indian industry. Now that's the gap bridging which is happening. Sir, uh, what is the other segments of the military job roles? Uh, we think military does only fighting with the borders like I that. I have covered in my presentation that 5 lakh crores worth of rupees which has been spent by military on absolutely latest equipment, best of the network, best of the satellite milking and everything which we are doing is, is so modern, the equipment is so modern, who is operating it, who is maintaining it, a soldier in uniform. But the civil world thinks soldier is good enough only to hold a rifle and he is fighting at the border. No, even to use that rifle, even to 
assemble that rifle, even his day to day life, everything is modernized. He is so, so tech savvy. He is so tech savvy that he can be an asset to this nation. Please, I request this nation not to waste this asset. For, read his CV, understand what all this gentleman can do or the lady can do and he can actually add value to your in industry. He can be, this, these boys when they come out of the forces, they can add value to the entire nation. Sir, uh, now the cyber technology and uh, all the technology, sir, uh, very advanced now. Uh, can we put here in this industry? The, the cyber technology, it, the Indian Armed Forces has its own cyber agency. We are almost the best in cyber as far as the cyber thing is concerned. That is why nobody can breach our networks. These networks are designed, built, made, operated and kept secured by our own cyber agencies of the armed forces. So don't worry, the entire cyber is secure. Again, the same soldier is doing it. So trust this soldier and I'm sure the nation will do well.